Welcome to Let's Chit Chat with Chandria Singleton of Healthy Trails Living. I am a licensed and registered radiologic technologist and a certified health coach and raw food chef. In this podcast, we are going to take you on a deep dive into self-care, wellness, and travel. So buckle up. Here we go. for joining us on our Healthy Living Sunday. And tonight we are going to be featuring a brand new chef with us, Chef Tessa. She's gonna be making two awesome recipes for us. The first one is gonna be shredded jackfruit tacos with cauliflower tortillas, oh my goodness, and a vegan dessert. And who doesn't love dessert? So before we turn it over to uh, Chef Tessa, there are a few things we would like for you guys to do, like Sean mentioned. One, grab a pen and some paper so that you can take good notes on these awesome recipes so that you're able to recreate them for yourselves and your families. Number two, if you have any questions, please make sure that you put those questions in the chat so that we can take a look at those. Uh, someone will answer the ones that can be answered in the chat, or I will audibly uh, mention some of those questions to Chef Tessa so that she can also give you guys feedback for your answers. I hope that you guys enjoy, and Chef Tessa, take it away. Thanks so much, Keosha. Thanks so much, everybody, for having me tonight. So happy to be with you all on National Taco Day. It is. So in a little shout out to our beloved taco, Tonight, we're gonna make my go-to plant-based taco recipe, shredded jackfruit tacos. It's so full of texture and flavor that I guarantee you even the die-hard, uh, meat-loving taco person in your life is gonna be satisfied. So the way we're gonna pull that off tonight is by braising our jackfruit in a very flavorful mixture of onions, garlic, red bell pepper, tomato, Nice little blend of Latin spices that we're gonna throw in there. We're gonna shred it all up. We're gonna wrap it in some uh, vegan gluten-free cauliflower tacos, as Kaisha mentioned. Gonna wash it all down with a little avocado margarita. So that's our margarita mocktail for tonight. It's uh, got some added uh, great uh, uh, shout out to the, the fruits and, and veggie lovers out there. So. So let's get started, let's get to it. So what I'm working on now, just to uh, get our jackfruit taco filling going here, uh, I've got uh, my veggies prepped. So I've got one uh, onion that I've cut into half moon slices, okay? You can probably see that here. Just little half moon rings there, okay? I've got about four cloves of garlic minced up that I've added in. And I'm just working on the, the last piece of that veggie mix here, my uh, sliced bell peppers. So I've just, seeded, I've just seeded those, and then I'm just kind of slicing them into thin strips here. Adds a little nice color too, great flavor. So while I'm just finishing that up and adding that to our veggie mixture, I'm gonna just chat with you a little bit about the star of our, uh, our dish here, and that's our jackfruit. So jackfruit's fantastic because it's so full of great nutrients. Uh, for those of you out there wondering what in the world is jackfruit, <laughs> something you don't see too commonly in most grocery stores. It's a, a fruit that grows in, uh, tends to grow in tropical climates, so places like Brazil and the Philippines. So you're gonna find this when you go to, to Asian supermarkets. Usually you'll, you'll see cans of jackfruit like this, which makes it super easy and convenient to work with. What you're going to want to look for is the young green jackfruit in brine or water is how it's usually canned. And uh, the reason you want it at that stage when it's underripe and canned is because it's perfect for savory dishes like these. and makes the perfect meat substitute because of the way it shreds up. Uh, if you wait, if you get the cans where uh, it's already been ripened and it's in a syrup, then you're going to have some dessert tacos on your hands and that's another recipe for another time. Probably not what we're going for here tonight, right? So let me just uh, give you an idea what this looks like. So once you um, open your can to the jackfruit, you're gonna find it's cut into convenient little wedges like this, right? 
So you're gonna wanna rinse, drain it. And then when you get your little wedges, go ahead and just, you know, give them a little check. Uh, it's already cut, but sometimes these little corner pieces have sort of a firm, firm uh, fibrous little core there. So if you feel like it's a little tough, you can just take your, take your knife, just give it a little slice like that. Kind of just make sure that that tough core will break up real easily for you when it's getting nice and, and oozy there in the mixture when it's heating up so it'll shred really easily. So just giving that a check, just uh, doing that. We're gonna toss those in the, the slow cooker. I'm gonna use the slow cooker method tonight. Um, that's one of my favorites because I can just throw everything in and leave it, let it simmer, come back to it, and it's pretty much good to go for me. Um, you can absolutely make this on the stove top as well if you need dinner in a, in a hurry. And in under 30 minutes, it'll be ready for you. So don't hesitate to do that if you like. But for me tonight, we're going slow cooker. So we're just going to add the jackfruit in with our base here. We're going to toss in our veggies that we've already sliced up. Super easy. Okay. I'm going to discard this here in the little room. We're just going to add a little bit of a drizzle olive oil on top there to kind of get things going. All right. And I'm just going to add a little bit of my seasoning blend here. So this is a great little homemade saison seasoning blend. Great Latin spice blend that's pretty much essential for any of your, of your Latin inspired recipes like this. So um, details on that, we can provide that in some uh, some uh, questions later, you can feel free to reach out to me and I'll uh, give you some more info on that. But just a nice blend basically of powdered garlic, oregano, cumin, coriander, uh, all that good stuff. So I just add in a little bit of that Saison blend, about a tablespoon. Then add about a teaspoon of salt on top of that. We're just building some flavor layers here. We're going to add in one can, four, uh, 14 ounce can of fire roasted diced tomatoes. I love the fire roasted because they have that added depth of flavor from the roasting. But of course, feel free to use your fresh tomatoes or your own canned tomatoes, whatever you like. Just going to pour those right on top. Nice little juicy layer there. Then I have a little, uh, about a half a cup of vegetable broth. And I'm just adding that in to make sure I get a nice, good kind of juicy, juicy sauce going. That'll help things as, as everything heats up and kind of blends together a little bit. Perfect. Okay, I'm just gonna top that up with a little fresh ground pepper. And our final little tablespoon of our Saison blends. Again, just kind of making sure that flavor gets through every little bit of the dish here. If you like, you can certainly adjust the amount of salt. I'm just doing one more teaspoon here. There we go. And we are good to go with our shredded jackfruit mixture. So I'm just gonna get this in this little cooker. And of course, on low, this would cook in about six to eight hours, but we can keep it on high and it'll be done in three to four. Uh, tonight we got a super fast slow cooker, so it'll be done in about 20. <laughs> All right. So while we're uh, getting that done, uh, don't mind the commotion. Small kitchen, we drop things that happens. So I'm just gonna make a little room, get these empty cans out of the way, and let's talk about our cauliflower tortillas. Yes. Yes, All right. please. Okay. So. To give all of your ears a break, I've just processed this ahead of time. All right, I'm gonna tell you what's in our cauliflower tortilla dough. So all I did was add in a, about a small head of cauliflower cut into florets. I processed it up until it was a super fine texture like sand, about as close to that as you can get it. Uh, then I just added in a cup of cassava flour. So cassava flour, really important for this because it gives the tortillas that nice kind of chewy texture that we want. Keeps them from becoming too dense, helps everything bind together. That way we can make sure we don't have tortillas that are too hard that are breaking up on us, right? So we just add in the cassava flour, process that until you start to get kind of clumps of dough starting to combine together. And you can see that kind of here, that little far away, but you probably get an idea there. So, all I'm going to do now is 
Yeah. Quick question for you, if you don't mind. Um, yeah. We've got a couple questions about the olive oil that was used in the um, taco or the meat seasoning. Okay. And is there um, extra virgin olive oil or regular or light? Or if you use grapeseed oil or masa harina instead? Absolutely. So you can use, feel free to use any kind of oil that you like, that it works with your particular eating plan. Um, I love olive oil for most things. Extra virgin is great and, and things like dressings where you really want that, that olivey flavor to kind of jump out. I like sort of the more neutral, um, balanced flavor of the olive oil overall in most things. Um, I find it kind of keeps, keeps things a little bit neutral and balanced that way. But that's just me. You can use whatever oil you like for that. Not a problem at all. Thank all you. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So back to our cauliflower tortillas here. These are great because the dough is so easy, just the two ingredients. You can add a little salt or sazon in the mix as well if you want to season it up a bit. But feel free to just leave it as is, and it's perfectly great that way as well. So all I'm going to do is uh, take little balls of dough. We basically divide up the dough into about uh, six to ten balls like this. Right, so everybody can see. Yeah. That's and that kind of gives us a nice size taco to work with. But of course, you can adjust those however you'd like, just to kind of make the size that you want, right? So I'm just going to put these on a little flower lined uh, piece of wax paper here on a baking sheet. And I'm going to top this just to help out a little bit, keep things from getting too sticky with another little piece of wax paper. And I'm just gonna roll them out like so, all right? So if you see them breaking up a little bit on you, on the edges, no big deal. You just kind of pat it back together, keep rolling it out, and eventually you're gonna get a nice thin little uh, top over there. Just, you don't want to get it too, too thin. You don't want to leave it too thick either. Just kind of look for that, that happy medium if you can when you're working with it. Right. Just about done for one here, and I'll give you an idea what we're looking at. So when you get it rolled out, it looks a little bit rustic, right? Edges aren't too pretty. A <laughs> little bit broken up, and that's okay. That's what happens when we're, we're working with these. So if you want them cleaned up a little bit, look extra pretty. Uh, this is a very informal uh, little mechanism I have for cleaning up my edges. <laughs> I actually use the top of my martini shaker because I don't have a big enough biscuit ring. So use what you got. It's all good. Whatever. So I'm literally just uh, cutting a little ring around the edge here. You guys can all see. I'll try to tilt it a little bit. There you go. Going to take away the little extra piece there. All right. We're doing a little smush, get it all together. And then this is where a spatula is a fantastic helper here. So just gonna take a little spatula, slide it right under, put it on a baking sheet. There you go. I'm gonna get my other one going here. And while you're working on that one, uh, Tessa, we've got a question about the flour. Um, mm -hmm. Someone asked if they could use masa harina for and as a substitute for cassava flour and could they possibly use a tortilla press instead of that's you know that's a great question and honestly with with these two ingredients i've not personally tried it so i can't say for sure how it would all come out i know that um this cauliflower with this flour tends to achieve a, a perfect little texture i say definitely play with it try you know with the masa harina if you like Use a tortilla press, you know, and just see see what you get. Um, honestly, I think uh, there's a lot of adapting you can do with this. It just all is a matter of personal, you know, taste, preference of the texture, things like that. So give it a try. I can't say, but definitely uh, experiment and see what happens there. All right. Thank you so much. You bet. So I'm just uh, slicing kind of cutting my uh, ring around the last one here. All right, that's and slide that up, get it on the baking sheet. And then guys, I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a brush 
with some olive oil, again, or any oil you like, whatever your preference is there. There we go. Okay. And then I'm just gonna slide these uh, in the oven. I'm gonna broil them for about you know, three, four minutes on each side on high, just to give them that nice little charred kind of flavor that you, you might get with a nice corn tortilla. So um, that's all there is to that. This dough we can, you know, keep in the fridge. It lasts for a few days, keep it in the freezer. You want to make these uh, little roll out your tortillas ahead of time, freeze them, just pull them out when you're ready to use them. It freezes great and lasts a while. So I'm just going to clean this up if you have any more questions or if you think it's a good time for a little commercial break and come back yeah. with our credit tacos. Yes, yes. All right. Well, we're going to go cut to commercial while you get things set up. So guys, oh, I am going to start. Um, Sean, if you can, can you spotlight my screen? Yep, you're good. All right. Thank you. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're going, I'm gonna share my screen and share a little bit of a commercial here for what is to come after Chef Tessa. Can you guys hear that? guys so that's just a little bit of a preview of what is to come with all of our wonderful participants after our cooking session um but like i said that's just a little bit of a preview of what is to come after chef tessa sh shares with us another awesome recipe because what is an entree without dessert so um chef tessa are you ready for us yet All right, are we unmuted? Can you hear me all right? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, guys. So I'm just pulling out our awesome little uh, jackfruit mixture here. It's been braising up for us and I think we're ready. Just wanted to uh, give you guys a little idea of how to shred this up. So uh, once you've got the mixture all cooked up, I kind of left a started shredding and already left a couple pieces whole so you can see what we're we're working with here so i'm just going to take take a couple of our pieces with them um, just use a couple forks you can use tongs and just kind of press into the the jackfruit mixture it should shred right up for you you can use forks like i'm doing here and then i'll show you the final product we'll get our mixture finished shredding up here you guys see that okay? How's that look? That looks see, amazing. See the Absolutely. nice shred? Almost looks like chicken, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Awesome. I love it. All right. So you've got that good to go. If we just uh, give it a little taste test, and I think it's just about right. I'm just going to add a final touch of seasoning here. I'm going to add a squeeze of lime. Because that just sets everything off perfectly, that bright little burst of citrus there. Going to add a little bit of minced cilantro. That nice color in there and always adds a nice kind of herby, herby taste there too. All right, just going to toss that up, give you guys another look. Going to pull out my cauliflower tortillas here that I just ran under the broiler for a few minutes. They're ready for us too. So you can see guys, now that these have cooked up, how nice and bendable they are. See that? No breakings, got that nice little uh, chewy texture to it, right? Yeah. So just, just gonna go ahead and get these, get these set up with our nice little jackfruit filling. There we go. 
Does that look? Let's like look. this up. And we had okay. someone ask, what are the health, some of the health benefits of jackfruit? Okay, great question. So jackfruit is low in calorie, low in co no cholesterol, first of all. Also high in fiber, high in potassium. So really great that way. A little bit low on the protein side, so just make sure you try to compensate for that, of course, with the things you're eating throughout the day or with your meal uh, to make sure you're getting your protein too. But um, again, awesome sources and some, some other nutrients there that we need. The potassium and fiber, so it's great right. that way. Good to know. And you've got some excellent comments coming through here about how good it looks and I can't wait to try it and how beautiful awesome. it is. Awesome. Great. We're just garnished with a little bit more cilantro. I've got juices flowing out of these uh, jackfruit tacos, so don't mind the messy plate here. But here we go, guys. Jackfruit tacos. Not bad. Kind of want to take a bite, but I'm afraid I'm going to make a big mess in front of you. So we're going to leave that. <laughs> Leave that for now, I won't burden you guys with that sight. And now, if you're all ready, let's get going with our cocktail, or mocktail, I should say, right? Our avocado margarita. So, to make that, I'm going to pull this into camera view a little bit better here. I've got one avocado that's been pitted and just the flesh scooped into our blender here. Okay, I've got a little juice mixture of fresh juices that I squeezed. So I've got two oranges and three limes just juiced in this, this little mixture. I'm going to add that right in. Okay. And I'm going to add a little bit of agave. Now you guys, you can use whatever sweetener works best with your eating plan for your preference. I like agave in this because of course same plant comes from the same plant as tequila, right? It almost has this slight little subtle crossover flavor to it that I think is really nice for, for this particular drink. So I'm using agave today. I'm just going to use about two tablespoons, but again, play with that. Use less or more depending on your preference. Okay, gonna blend this up if you don't mind the noise for just a minute. Go right ahead. All right. Yes. Let me get that combined nice and smooth. Beautiful color, right? Yeah. Seeing that avocado shine through already. Just gonna add a little bit of crushed ice now. Just to make it nice and cold and frothy. Always good for a marg, right? We're going to blend that up. Again. All right. What do you think, guys? I think we need to rim some glasses, right? And get these poured out. So uh, this could make, you know, depending on what size of glass you want. If you're greedy like me and want a big glass, you might get one and a half glasses out. <laughs> But um, if you are a, a little more judicious with it, you'd probably be fine with a couple small glasses like this. So I'm just rimming these with a little bit of lime, a little uh, lime wedge, right, to get that juice on there. And then I'm going to give it a dunk in our extra sazon blend from earlier so we get that kind of nice spicy blend on the rim. And of course, if you like things spicy, you could always add a little chili powder, a little cayenne, if you really want to get get things spiced up. I know my husband would. <laughs> Me, not so much. So here we go. Doesn't that look good? Nice brown avocado mixture there. Here we go. All right. And then, of course, we get a do a little garnish, right? We'll get our lime. Some slippery limes here. Let's see how that goes. How about we just give it a dunk? Sounds there like a good idea. <laughs> Uncooperative lime wedges we're working with today. 
All right, little sprig of cilantro in there. And I think we're good to go. So we got our margaritas, we've got our jackfruit tacos. And that's it guys. So our shredded jackfruit tacos, cauliflower tortillas, and avocado margaritas. Hope you have a very happy taco day with these. Sounds great. Thank you so much. That was absolutely wonderful and beautiful. And I'm sure it tastes great too. We're all over here probably wishing we were able to take a bite the way you just did. So thank you so much for your time and your expertise. We hope that you guys took amazing notes so that you guys can recreate this in the way that you feel is going to be good for you and to your taste. Once again, thank you so much for your time, Tessa and Chandria. We will let you guys take it over. Okay, thank you ladies so much. And Tess, if you could tell us, um, tell us where they can find you on IG. Let them know your IG handle. Absolutely, so while we're uh, working on the website, in the meantime, please feel free to look for me on Instagram, my account. Name is Torts and Eat. So tort like the cake and eat like food. <laughs> <laughs> We can relate to the eat, but I'll be honest, I didn't know what a torque was. <laughs> but excellent job. Thank you. We're I hope you enjoyed this podcast today. Thank you so much for listening. This is just one of the many free resources I offer to my clients to dump unhealthy habits and begin living. Be sure to visit my website for more free resources and health coaching. Again, thank you for listening. Be sure to subscribe, leave a review, and share this podcast with others so they can join the Let's Chit Chat podcast. Have a great day, you guys. See you next episode.